Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you seven secrets of the import dialog in Lightroom. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you seven tips and tricks for working smarter in the import module in Lightroom. These tips and tricks are going to help you make better use of the import module. What I have here is a set of old images that I want to bring into Lightroom, but I only want to bring some of them in. So I've just deselected everything by selecting Uncheck All, and then I've gone through and determined those images that I want to import. And I've already set up a destination for these onto one of my external drives. The first tip is actually making a backup of these images as I import them. This is possible using the file handling options. I'll open the file handling panel and you can see that I can make a second copy of the images as I import them. I'm going to select that option and then I'm going to select another drive. So I'm going to a, another external drive. I'm going to my photos folder there and I'm choosing the folder into which I want to make a duplicate or a backup of these images on import. Now this is a particularly handy feature if you're importing images from a camera card because using this you can make your backup as exactly the same time as you do your importing, making the entire backup process pretty much seamless. The second tip is the ability that you have to make some edits to your images as you import them. In the Apply During Import area in this panel here, you have an option for applying develop settings to your images as you import them. Now these are the same develop settings as you have in the develop module in Lightroom. So I actually have created an import preset. And what that import preset does is it sets the images to the preview as they were on the back of the camera. And they can also make other adjustments. You can set up this import preset. You can create one or you can just use an existing preset and apply it to all of the images as you import them into Lightroom. This is a handy feature if you like to always make a specific change to your images, then create an import preset for it and it will be automatically applied to your images and you won't have to do it manually. Another thing you can do as you import your images into Lightroom is to apply metadata to the images. I have a metadata preset already set up and what that does is it applies copyright information to my images. Let's just go in and have a look at the preset. In this preset there's some basic information added to all my images, my copyright details and my website. There's also some creator information added as well as information about the capture. Now I do that automatically on import so that all of my images are automatically tagged with this metadata. Again, so I don't have to do it manually. If you're the kind of person who likes to rename your files, you can do that on import too. In the file renaming area, you can select to rename your files and then you can select a template for renaming them. Let's just go into edit and we'll edit the currently selected template, which is a date and file name template. Right now it's adding a date and the original image file name but we could create anything as a template and there are also a number of templates just shipped with Lightroom that you can use. For example, let's have a look at custom name sequence. In this one we can give the image a custom name and then a sequence so they'll be numbered 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Let's choose that one. I'll just click done. Now with this one, because it has custom name in it, we get to put in the custom name. So I'm just going to call this Safari West. And this is automatically going to be the name applied to each one of these images as they're imported. Now if you're importing images, for example, from a trip and say you're away for a week or two, 
then you can, as you import the images, have them split up by the date that they were taken. So from the destination drop down list here, instead of selecting as I have here into one folder, you can select by date. And in that case, the images are going to be organized by date in the catalog inside Lightroom. And they're actually going to be placed in folders by date. Now you would choose that if that makes sense to you. I prefer to have mine just in one folder, but I know a lot of people prefer to organize, say for example, a trip by date. And so if that's the way you want to organize your images, then this option is easily accessible to you. The other thing that you can save time doing in the import dialog in Lightroom is to set up your previews. By default, I set up my previews as standard previews. That's the best use of space and it's going to give you faster processing later on in Lightroom. And new to Lightroom 5 is the ability to build smart previews. Now they're different to standard previews and if you're curious, look at my video on standard and smart previews in Lightroom. But I suggest that you build smart previews if space is not a huge issue. And again, this is going to allow me to access and edit these images even if the disk that they're on is not connected to the computer. That's yet another way that you can speed up your work in Lightroom and also make it possible to edit images even if they're not on a disk connected to your computer. And my final Lightroom import tip is one that's going to save you a lot of time in the import module itself. Because if you've already thought that all the steps that I've taken here are a little bit cumbersome, then yes they are. But if these are settings that I would typically apply on importing images into Lightroom if I would make all these choices, then I'm going to save this as an import preset. So I'll go to None here and I'm going to click Save Current Settings as New Preset and I'm going to call this Helen because it's my preferred preset and I'll click Create. Now what I can do anytime I come into Lightroom's import module is I can just go and select Helen as the preset and all these settings are going to immediately be applied in this dialog. And all I'll need to do is to go and change those that I don't want to apply. For example, if I were not bringing images in from Safari West, if I were bringing them in from a trip to Rome, for example, I would just change Safari Rest to read Rome. And then I'm ready to go and import the images without having to make all these selections and remember exactly what I usually choose as the options in the import dialog. So there you have it, seven import tips and tricks to save you time working in Lightroom and to save you time working in the import module here in Lightroom. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwin.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.